Hi guys, welcome to The Bite. My name is Jackie. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my take on a crab cake. I started making these um, actually for my husband's birthday this year. We were already in quarantine. We were already in the middle of the pandemic life. And I really kind of wanted to bring Palestinian flavors into a crab cake. And I know Gaza or Gaza is really well known for their seafood. And right now between uh, like September and November, it's their crab season. So I thought this was the perfect time to share this with you. Also, I really happen to love crab cakes Benedict. So while I was testing the recipe, one of the times I made a crab cake Benedict and it turned out bomb diggity. So I'm like, let me just share everything with you. So I'm going to be sharing with you the crab cake and the Benedict portion. So to start off with, I have everything here for the crab cake. So let's go over these ingredients first. So I have panko breadcrumbs. These are unflavored. There's just a little bit of parsley flakes in there. I have some tomatoes, uh, like very diced fine tomatoes, uh, some garlic, some onions, parsley, bell peppers, and a little bit of red chili. You can also use jalapeno or just omit that entirely. I have some uh, some mayo, an egg, I have some lemon juice, salt, and pepper. For the spices, I have some mat, um, coriander, paprika, and a little bit of Aleppo pepper. You can substitute Aleppo pepper for red pepper flakes, cayenne pepper, um, a little extra paprika, or you can leave out that spiciness, totally up to you. The somat, if you watch my Middle Eastern Kitchen Essentials video, somat is a very common staple for our food and it's got a lemony kind of tart flavor and it comes from a berry which gives it that beautiful purple hue obviously we have crab meat now i'm using lump crab meat you can use whatever kind of crab meat you like you can use the fresh crab meat i was able to find this um in the seafood section of my grocery store so i would definitely recommend if you can get your hands on that as long as it's in the seafood section. If you find it where kind of like the canned tuna is, I would avoid that altogether for, for this recipe, but make sure that it's fresh and in the refrigerated section. So I am gonna just put this all together, mix it up. I mix all the other ingredients first and then I add the crab last. And I do that so that I don't break up the crab. I wanna have, I wanna be able to bite in and see chunks of crab. And if I feel like I mix it too much, I, they kind of all crumble and I don't really want that to happen. So I'm just gonna put everything in here and give it a mix. So this is what the mixture should look like. I just add parsley in here, but you can also add dill. You can add cilantro. Um, Either way, I just prefer it like this. I think it tastes really good just as is. I'm gonna salt it, a little bit of black pepper, give it another mix, and now I'm gonna add in all the crab. And I just want to gently kind of fold it in so I don't break anything up into small pieces. So I'm making a half batch of this. On my blog, you will find the recipe there. You can always find all my recipes there and you can find uh, the link in the description box down below. That'll be the first thing you see. But I'm making a half batch of this and in my recipe, I use one egg and it's you can't really take half of an egg. So I feel like this mixture for me is a bit too watery. So I'm gonna add um, a little bit more breadcrumbs just to kind of soak up all that extra liquid that I don't want in my crab cake but the full complete recipe will be again in my blog. So check that out there. Okay, this to me looks beautiful. I am gonna stop right here and I wanna cover this and put this in the fridge for 15 to 20 minutes. In the meantime, I'm gonna get everything set up for my eggs benedict. The crab meat was in the fridge for about 15 minutes or so. I'm just gonna give it a really quick mix one more time and then shape them into Krabby Patties, I guess. I reference Krabby Patties because my daughter has been into this SpongeBob book that we've been reading and it talks about the Krabby Patties that he makes at work. Anyways, I have here an ice cream scoop that we will be using to form our crab 
cakes. <laughs> so I'm just gonna fill one up, again, being gentle to not break the crab meat too much. And I'm just gonna form them, and then afterwards I will press them down slightly so that they can um, just form their shape a little bit better. All right, so here I have seven very generous amounts of the crab cake mix, and I'm just flat flattening the top so that they can sit really nicely on the English muffin that we'll be placing them on very shortly. So if you were using the full recipe, it's going to make a, probably 15 um, crab cakes, which is a typical amount for one, one pound of crab. Um, I used half a pound of crab today for this amount. So you can use however much you like, they last in the fridge. So yep, this is done. I'm gonna go wash my hands get my oil heated up and so that way we can fry these up and get started on the Benedict. So I have my medium nonstick pan here with a little bit of vegetable oil or any kind of high um, smoke point oil. I wouldn't recommend frying in olive oil ever. Um, and I'm just gonna take my crab cakes and just very carefully, because they can break apart as best as I can, keep them intact and just lay them right on there. You wanna fry them until they're golden on both sides and fully cooked through. And if you're making the entire batch um, they, and you wanna keep them warm while you're preparing the other components of the Benedict, you can always preheat your oven to 250 and keep the cooked crab cakes in there to stay warm, but they won't cook any further. So I'm gonna very carefully slide these all on, cook them off, and then we can get started on the rest of our Benedicts. All right, the crab cakes are done. There's a couple less than what we originally had because my husband and I got a little hungry and started snacking. So, you know how it goes. You know how it goes. You're in the kitchen, you're cooking, things are crunchy, you just wanna eat them right then and there. Just, you, you gotta do it. So anyways, now we're gonna prep the hollandaise sauce that goes on top of the eggs Benedict and the poached eggs. So for the poached eggs, I have a pot of water coming to a really light boil. It's important that it's a light boil so that the egg doesn't break while it's poaching. To poach them, you will need a little bit of vinegar and the vinegar helps keep the egg intact. Without this, they kind of become a little bit like flimsy, the egg white portion does. I just think it looks a little bit better and it holds its shape with the tiny bit of vinegar. And then I like to crack my eggs in two separate ramekins. I just think it's a lot easier to pour it into the, uh, the water. For the hollandaise sauce, we're gonna get to work on that right now. I have two egg yolks in here, and then I'm going to put a little splash of lemon juice. This is my fresh squeezed lemon juice. I make this like twice a week because <laughs> I use lemon juice for everything. So I'm just gonna give that a really, really good whisk and let it start coming together. All right, and now we're ready to bring everything to the stove. So along with the hollandaise sauce, I have a little bit of melted butter and some salt that I'll just put in to give it the flavor. So I'm gonna bring all of this over there. It looks like my water is ready. Oh, and for the hollandaise sauce, you wanna make sure that you have a small saucepan that has just like a couple inches of water and you wanna make sure that the bowl you're making the sauce in is able to sit perfectly right on top of it. The steam from the simmering water will hit this and temper the eggs and will help create that thick hollandaise sauce that we all know and love for our Benedicts. So I'm gonna bring all this over to the stove and we can finish this all up. All right, so this water is not quite where I want it yet. I have it lowered to where it would be at a simmer. You wanna see some light bubbles and it's not quite there yet, but I am going to add in my vinegar right now. And again, that's just going to help the eggs keep their shape. So while that is getting ready, this looks like it's just about ready. This is at a simmer and there's much less water in here. You can see it's just like, just the very bottom portion of it. And my bowl sits perfectly right on top. So immediately you wanna start whisking this. So when it hits the heat, the eggs can start to cook and you don't want that to happen because then they'll overcook and it'll just be a really thick kind of gloopy mess, which won't be appealing. So while I'm stirring this, I want to drizzle in my melted butter. So this is just melted butter that I melted in the microwave and you wanna add it like a tablespoon at a time. 
and the sauce will begin to form. You can see it's already starting to thicken. So this is the consistency that I'm looking for. It kind of comes down um, and makes like ribbons. You can, it almost looks like a very light custard. So at this point, I'm gonna remove it from the heat, place it right here and stir it, and then just add a little bit of salt for flavor. If you find that your egg yolks begin to cook and it gets too thick and kind of starts to break and the oil separates, add a little bit of the warm water that you had the bowl sitting on top of and that will help bring your sauce back together. So you'll just need to take like a tablespoon of that and add it into the sauce and just whisk it all up and it will end up coming back together. I learned that the hard way, but it actually ends up working out perfectly. And if you want to make this like a couple I don't know, like 10 minutes in advance. Same thing, you just take your warm water and stick it in here and just give it a whisk and it'll come right back together. It's pretty awesome actually. So I'm gonna move this out of the way and bring the pot of water for the eggs over here. Let this come to a light boil and then we will poach our eggs. Meanwhile, I'm gonna toast my English muffins so that we can assemble everything and mama's ready. So you see how there's light bubbles forming? That's perfect, that means the water is ready for the egg. So I'm going to kind of make like a whirlpool, get it going so that I can add my egg directly back into the water. And you can see the egg white kind of forms on itself. So the vinegar is already in the water and this is gonna sit for about three minutes until it's cooked on the outside and the inside is still runny. Once that happens, I'll take a slotted spoon and remove it and place it on a paper towel lined plate. So this first egg is done. It's been in here for three minutes and that's just where my husband likes it. So I'm going to remove this, use my slotted spoon and just place it on the paper towel to collect any excess liquid. And I'm, I'm gonna do the second egg. Second egg is ready. I'm gonna place it on the paper towel and I will meet you at the table to set up our Benedicts. Okay, crab cakes are ready, poached eggs, the hollandaise sauce, all the components are ready and we are gonna put it together right now. So I have a toasted English muffin on my plate and I'm just going to place a couple crab cakes or one crab cake on each one. Then, and you can see here, the second one, I actually forgot to do the whirlpool, but you can see how it's not as well formed as the first one where I did do the whirlpool. So the whirlpool thing is not very necessary, but if you want it to have that look to it, then I'd suggest the whirlpool. Um, so I'm going to place one egg on each Benedict. Alrighty, and just be very careful because if you're, you know, they're delicate and you don't want to break the egg yolk before they get on the plate. So you can see here that my hollandaise sauce has thickened up. It's not as loose as I would like it because it's gonna look really gloopy if I put it on the plate like this. And I wanted to show you this. This is the warm water that we use at the bottom of this bowl. So I'm going to add it directly in, about a tablespoon at a time, and give it a whisk. And it's exactly where I want it now. It's as easy as that. So if that happens to you, the water will do the trick. Guaranteed. So I'm now, so on the side for a little bit of garnish, I have some parsley and I have some cayenne pepper, or you can use paprika if you don't want anything um, spicy. So now that we have this going, I'm just going to drizzle on the hollandaise sauce. Doesn't that look beautiful? Ugh. Just like so creamy and luscious. And this really is not difficult. It does require some technique, but it's kind of fun to get involved in the kitchen and do something that you would normally eat out at a restaurant. At least I think it is. So that's beautiful. I'm going to add just a touch of cayenne pepper. I like to put it in my hands and then just sprinkle it at the top to give it that, I don't know, curb, curb appeal. It's just got a little flair, a little something, something on top. And then, Garnish it with a bit of parsley. And you have yourself Palestinian style eggs benedict. Look at how beautiful. 
Now I'm gonna be completely honest. I am not a fan of egg yolks, runny egg yolks. So I won't be eating these. My husband will be eating these. I'm gonna scramble myself some eggs and put it on top of my eggs benedict with the hollandaise sauce. But I just wanna show you what it looks like when you cut into it. Let me go grab a knife real quick. We are ready to cut into one of these. So I am going to just cut into it. Oh man. So any of you who like egg yolks <laughs> pouring out, this is definitely a sight for you. For me, I will be just taste testing a crab cake so that I can show you just how good they are. They are filled. I mean, when you come up close to them, you can see, you can still see all the crab meat. And a lot of people actually cook the onions and the peppers and the tomatoes, but I don't find it necessary. I really think it adds a lot of brightness to the crab cake, which is very delicious. So, mm. the lemon juice adds a really nice fresh bite and acidity and the somat kind of does the same thing. And those flavors always really tend to go well with seafood anyways. So I figured that they would be the perfect complement to this crab cake. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget to give these a try when you do. You can tag me on Instagram at the bite with Jackie. I would love to see your recreations. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time on the bites. <laughs>